Facebook page. Yes, we have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Elder Francis, I, I'm going to give over this opportunity to you. The floor is yours. Greetings to 30 family. How are you? We are well. Yes, uh, what a powerful day. Uh, John says I was in, in the spirit on the Lord's day. So I hope everyone uh, is in the spirit as yes, the Lord is going to guide us and lead us. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this afternoon for giving us this privilege to worship you, to share your word. Guide us, O oh Lord, in whatever we do, in whatever we say, may it give glory and honor back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As our sister Melissa, the co-host, was saying, uh, we are looking at a such challenging topic, music and worship. You realize that uh, when we are looking at this topic, which is music, worship, past, present, and the future, uh, I want us to start with a verse that is very common uh, whilst we are preparing to share. Those who are having their Bibles, you can go to 1 Samuel 17, verse 12. And it came to pass when the spirit of God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Uh, the host, I want, I want you to confirm if my screen in my job, is being shared. I find that at least no is your so video is off though. Boys that I work with. What yes, I have seen off the video so that we, <laughs> we go to the presentation straight. Okay, no problem. When I came in this morning, okay? one of the brothers at the back, there's so many men in here. I'm telling the truth, I'm happy. Men. Sorry about that, just had to mute everyone. Um, if you you are on the platform and you're not the speaker, may you kindly just keep your your Zoom muted. Elder Francis, you can unmute yourself. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes, we are looking at the topic that we have been given today, where we are looking at music and worship. And at, at the same time, we are looking at the past, the present, and the future. So looking at this topic, it's quite too broad. Uh, I'll just summarize some of the topics and I'll start with a uh, disclaimer. I will try to dwell much on the musicological perspective of music where we need to be practical. And uh, on this, on the same background, we'll try by all means to make sure that we, we move with time so after the presentation, we'll be able to, to define what music is and what worship is. And also we'll look at gospel, the type of music, the purpose of the music, what must be church music. Then we are going to dwell much on change and the need for change and the benefits thereof. And see whether the church is ready for that change. 
and you realize that <clears throat> music is found in every non-culture, past and present, varying widely between times and uh, places. That's why we are looking at from the past, the present, and the future. And since all people of the world, including the most isolated tribal groups, have a form of music, it can be, it can be concluded that music is largely or is likely to have been present in the ancestral population. This one, you can even Google this statement, you can find it there. And it also is in line with what the Bible says. God has woven music in the very fabric of his creation. We read that when he made all the things, the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for glory or with joy. If you go to Job chapter 38, verse 7. And also the book of Revelation also portrays heaven as a place of ceaseless praise with the songs of adoration to God and the Lamb resounding from all. You realize that we always preach that we'll sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. And we know when the saints go marching in and when Christ comes, saints in a, in a twinkling of an eye, in this, uh, and the trumpet shall sound in the last day. We are saying when we hear the sound of the trumpet, what are we referring to? And in heaven, there's no preaching. We all preach this. And we always say in heaven, there's only singing. And the singing and the music, music is a language. So we can use these words today interchangeably. Singing and music. But the reason is, of course, we want to establish where are we going. And Sister White says about music. It is one of the most effective means of impressing the heart with the spiritual truth. You realize that at funerals, at weddings, in different places, when we bring in music, it is the vehicle, the tool, the, the tool that we can now say communicate the heart and the whole body with the divine. And how often to the soul hard pressed and ready to despair, memory recalls some word of God. And sometimes you realize that music is used for various purposes. And today we are going to focus more on, uh, on the worship of uh, part of it. But you realize that from cradle to the grave, you will see that music plays a pivotal role. If you are tempted, if you are happy, is there someone who is happy we sing a song? Even if you are broken hearted, you realize that music plays a major role. Even if someone is of half hearted, someone is in despair, someone is afraid, fear can be dispelled by music. I'll also cite a practical example whilst, I, uh, whilst we move on. As our Redeemer leads, lead us to the threshold of the infinite, flushed with the glory of God. We may catch the themes of praise, thanksgiving from the heavenly choir right about the throne. And as the echo of the angels song is awakened in our earthly homes, hearts will be drawn closer to the heavenly singers. And the heaven's communion begins on earth. When we want to commune with heaven, when we want to have that intercourse with God, we sing a song. When songs are sung, we communicate with God. And Lucifer was one of the archangels, was the morning angel who would sing. Right? We learn here that praise, which is also sing, helps us. And music is also therapy. It can bring us closer to home. What is the function of music? Both, we have two types of music, or should I say two groups? Both sacred and secular music have these three functions that we are going to explain as we move on. Music is used for worship. Either you are worshiping the God of heaven or you worship other gods. That's why we have worship. Humanity, no one is spared. Everyone has the desire to worship. Either you worship the God of heaven or the other gods. There's no one who say, I don't worship. We also have music for ceremonies. You realize that we have different ceremonies that we have, be it work, harvest, marriage, initiation, child naming, coronation, seasons, even more. We also have music for entertainment. 
which is for social gathering, even for training. We have also folk music, which you are going to see that as we will be going on. Secular music is derived from the Latin word, which means worldly. Many times we look at the word secular, uh, we have, it has different connotations. When people are perceived to be singing secular music, by the end of the, the day, we should be able to say, what do we mean? And sometimes we use these words loosely, but it should help us to say, where are we and what do we mean? And sacred music is an adjective that describes something holy something religious, all connected to God. Something sacred deserve reverence, number one, and also at least respect at something that others consider to be holy. So we have the two groups of music, which is sacred music as well as secular music. So you will see that as we move on, we should be able to say, this type of music, is it sacred or is it secular? And here, I want you to take note with, on, on this one. With, within any given culture, music alone conveys emotional content and mood, which is music and drama, brings in coming together of people for a specific joint activity. Music and the religion are integrated and it draws people together, right? You realize that in heaven, you realize that music plays a pivotal role. The reason why we say angels will be singing holy, holy, holy. It is the vehicle that God himself used. And sometimes we tend to overlook it. If you want to bring people together, if you want to draw people together, for people to come together for a specific activity, bring music. The reason why even as an, Advent, as, as an Adventist family, we tend to not to to garner more support, you realize that we don't understand this. Many of other denominations, which I'm not going to mention names, though I can mention one by one, I, I am invited to go to different churches where they say, help us on how we can have more numbers. The moment you bring music, you bring multitudes and you bring many. If you want to focus on numbers, I'll also deviate a bit and give you an example. You will realize that the moment you bring music, even in the soccer stadium, more people are brought together. It also brings unity. And the rhythm also will come there, which, is, which finishes non-verbal uh, persuasions, not only to act, but to act together. On this one, it reminds me some some years back, uh, I was in the student council. As we were there, uh, we were protesting. During the, that protest, I'm not going to mention names. Some of them are late uh, because some of them are very uh, controversial or they are influential people. Lest we put them on spot because of Poppy X. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just pause a bit on that one. Uh, the song that was sung in Shona, Iwagamba, we were at this institution, we sang the song. As we sang the song, everyone came. It was uh, through supper time. The, the leader went on the stage, we were on the SRC, took place, hold the place up, everyone was singing the song. Plates were destroyed and the walls were nearly broken and everyone in one accord, we sang the song. And as we were singing, I remember I was at the front and we started crying, singing the song, uh, stand up like a brave and face the enemy. Everyone jumps in, join, and we were ready to face uh, the, the so-called enemy for that particular day. And the mission was accomplished. Alas, guess what? After some, some days, I asked people, why did we did what we have, what we did that day? Who was our enemy, by the way? And guess what? Not even one person could answer the question. No, we saw you singing the song, and we followed. And many people who joined that uh, protest, I could ask simple questions. Why? What were we protesting? 
It was music that was used during the liberation struggle. We are going to tackle it uh, when we will be going on. You realize that also music played a pivotal role. Why? Because it brings people together, right? Religious music, also called sacred music, is a type of music that is performed or composed for religious use or through religious influence. It may overlap with ritual music. Hello? I want you to take note of this. It may overlap with ritual music, which is music sacred and not performed or composed for or as ritual. We have many examples that I'm going to give as we'll be going on, uh, on that note. And music can be divided into this past, not only for this, but there are many. And you realize that music is a subject on its own. When you say type of music, there are so many things that will come out to those who are going to Google it. And I'm going to look at the popular music, which is commercial for commercial purposes, which is for sales. Uh, you realize that it changes very fast. There are many songs that are uh, popular music that we sing even in the church. The songs that becomes a hit within a short time especially choruses, and then it fades and it goes away. We also have art music, which is for financially stable and wealthy people or powerful leaders. They have specific type of music. It's not composed or played by anyone. You will realize that there's music for, this, for the elite, uh, to the young people, the young generation like you guys, most of you. You will realize that the type of music that you go for is not the type of music that uh, the wealthy would go or even the big, the elderly people because they are specific artists and specific genres that appeals from a different one. We also come to religious music and secular music. However, I want you to look at the art and the folk and the popular music. We are going to dwell much on these three. And if when we look at the folk music, we are looking specifically at music that is composed by the local community, where you cannot even identify who composed this music, who performed this music, I'll give you example as we move on. The song by Avuma Masabat, Sizongena Jerusalem. You cannot definitely go to say this song originated this way. And it must be, it, usually these songs are, are originated when there's a specific group of people can come in together as they do their uh, performances. One person has to add something as they go on, you will find that one, uh, one day, a stanza is composed the next day, another stanza, another stanza, it becomes communal music. It is, it's difficult to identify uh, who did that music or who performed that music per se. And you realize that as you go on, that type of music uh, will be popular for a specific period of time. Sometimes it can stay longer than that. And we also have Western music, which uses uh, styles and genres developed by the Western people. And it, it is also focused on the Western traditions. And I want you to underline style, the genre, as well as traditions. We, we will see as we go that most of the time we claim not to follow traditions, but we have many traditions that we follow. Adventism, Adventism is a culture. I repeat this, Adventism is a culture. Uh, those who follow the culture are called Adventists. And remember, as I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing from anthropologist Hamon Tuk <clears throat> when he followed this one, Umundu Umundu Nabantu. And I also like uh, T.S. Mamwenda, I will cite them as we'll be going. These people, they did a thorough research. Uh, I'll also touch on Hegel's uh, philosophies, uh, right? A society's culture is determined by individuals provided conviction is there. A society's culture, any society's culture is determined by individuals provided there is conviction in the members to say, I want to follow this culture. If you don't have the convictions, uh, conviction into 
any particular culture. That's why you see people see uh, labeled as deviancy, right? However, we should understand that there are some people who grab a society's culture, stay on that, they become stuck on that and they don't want to evolve they forget that the culture is dynamic. It evolves, it changes from one generation to another. It changes from one point to another. So we are saying also Adventism changes. You realize that I will just tackle uh, in passing whilst we are passing through. Uh, many times we have things that are raised in the church to say which one is ideal. We have idea and reality. If we go back to the time of Jesus, let's dress like Jesus. You realize that Jesus never wore a, a, a shirt and a necktie and a jacket. But many times we say, no, 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 no. Adventism does not change. What do we mean by it does not change? You realize that the people of the old, they were opening scrolls. God started by writing everything on the tablet of stones. The method that they form where the gospel is presented, it has changed. I remember at one church in my, in my church, hey, people uh, looked, viewed me as someone who was deviant when we started 2016, 2017, introducing church platforms on, on Facebook during church activities and people going on Facebook. It was seen as taboo, even for people to use it, to, to take out your cell phone in church. But you realize that as we move on, things change, culture change. It's a new culture that people can use their hymn books uh, on, on the phone or on the tablet. When people started the using cell phones, they were seen as uh, people who are not Christians. But if you bring a laptop right now, things are changing. And to, to, to worship virtual was seen as something that was taboo, which was not according to the culture. So we are saying within a given culture, music alone conveys emotional content as well as mood and music and dance brings people together and music and religion are integrated and it draws people together let's not forget that we need also everything i'll spend uh, much of my time here i have group classified this type of music into two we have secular music we have sacred music sacred music on the first you realize that on the first portion of the sacred music a uh, I further divide that within the sacred music, we have a sacred sacred, number one. We also have sacred secular. We have secular music, which is secular. Pardon me for the spelling there. And we also have secular music, which is also sacred. So we have four different parts. Number one, sacred music, there is sacred, sacred. There is sacred, secular. On the secular world, which we say it does not appeal to God, I've defined secular uh, before as anything that does not appeal to the God in heaven. So we are saying within the secular, we have a secular, secular. We also have secular, sacred. What do I mean? I'll come close home. On the sacred first part, when we worship God, not always do we have uh, secular, sacred, sacred. I'll give you example in the Adventist church. We have music that has been sung for sacred. Number one, I'll pause. The sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of... The moment you hear someone singing that song, you, you can see that it brings people, even if you were at a camp meeting, when you hear the song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, it brings people and the mind and everyone rushes to know that it is time to pray. People, you see automatically people on their knees because it's sacred, sacred. We also have some sacred, which is for funeral. There are songs that we cannot sing. They are purely for funeral. However, I will put a disclaimer. Funeral songs are also cultural in the regional, in the continental. I'll tell you, there is the song 
uh, that is co commonly sung here in South Africa. Uh, when they sing Asaki de Kayala, the song when it's sung here, it's sung as a sacred secular song. Whereas when you go across Limpopo, the moment you hear that song, Hachinamusha Panika, people in their mind, they start to see a board, they start to see a coffin, they start to see a grave. Rarely do they sing the song because it is, it is this connotation. And you realize that people have specific dressing for specific occasions and for specific functions. You, do, you don't dress anyhow, right? We also have baptism. We also have communion. There are specific songs that are sung for a specific sacredness. And we have songs that are secular within the sacred realm. We have lullaby songs that we sing for children. I'm, going to, I'm not going to cite many songs. There are songs you that are sung for the for, for the kids i you can mention many you ask yourself do they bring them closer to god no uh, is it blasphemy no there are songs that are sung to the children and then it ends there we have also work songs songs that we sing when we are working we also have love songs there are many love songs in the song of solomon it is a song on its own you realize that there is no phrase or no word that says Jesus or God. It is a song. Though it's sacred, it's also on the secular. We also have praise song. My beloved is mine, I am his. You praise your loved ones. We have those songs. And on the sacred secular, I'm coming to the other side on this wing, as you now see, we also have entertainment. We also have work songs, love songs, praise songs. This whole patch of secular and the secular, they usually merge. There are songs that you can sing that are not from the church, but they are not blasphemed to God. There are songs that can be sung from the secular world that has nothing to do with blasphemy. So you will see within the realm of the region of this patch, there are songs that are sung interchangeably. They've, they've, they've nothing to do with any demonic spirits or anything to do to the extremes, they are found within. That's why we have sacred, secular talk. We talk about our, we praise our loved ones. It's equally the same. There are so many musicians we have said, hello, stand wasami, kunjanina. It's the same song that can be sung here, my beloved is mine. So it is not, we will see it as we move on. It is not the person well, who sang the song, who make it holy, or who make it uh, uh, demonic, we are going to find out. We also have songs that are sung for worship, for worship our ancestors. There are specific songs that are sung for that. And also, if a funeral is not for someone who is not a Christian, there are specific songs, specific instruments, and specific people, and specific attires that are worn by people when we are following, focusing on this particular group. So I want us to dwell much on this. There are many times where we demonize people, forgetting that these songs are, is the song found within this region. If the songs are found within these regions, we have the songs that we sang that has nothing to do uh, with, um, the devil worship or godly, they are within, they are, they, I, I would rather call them okay. And sometimes people can imitate. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to spend much uh, on this one. There are some songs that are sung for the children that they copy. Uh, you have the examples, right? I want to focus on inclusivity versus exclusivity. Inclusivity is the practice or policy, allow me, point of correction that that embraces all people irrespective of race gender and disability whereas exclusivity practice of excluding and not admitting we don't even admit we restrict and the other term is predominance it's superiority and is el, 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 elitism and supremacy and 
selectiveness, you realize that in the gospel of Christ, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Imagine if Christ was here in our churches. Sometimes there are some people whom we say they are not proper, properly dressed or they don't sing music properly, but forgetting to say what is the occasion. We have many armor programs, women's songs uh, that, that, that people sing. Uh, different type of music, we should understand, is it a lullaby song? We have these for children where we, we have actions. They have nothing to do, we should understand. We have judges and adjudicators under the realm of spirituality of Adventism. This is where we have problems within the church, where we have people who always want to adjudicate and sometimes they forget to say, what is the event? I, I'm going to cite this example. Communication, it bring us together, my Lord, Pazumba, Papa, Zumba. Hey, that song is found within the realms that I have described. Say it's a secular sacred. It brings the young people together. And you will see that they enjoy church, they love, they continue. And sometimes when we spiritualize everything, everything we lose people. And within the Adventist family, you realize that I, I can say this one boldly. I have seen that we have more of rearrangers than composers. If composers are there, they are very few. Most of the songs from our hymn books, we borrow from other denominations. But when other denominations sing the same songs, we don't want to join. We see them as singing worldly songs and we see them as singing secular songs. Whereas the same thing, the same composition was done by us. And those people, they compose everything. There, there's the question, a million dollar question. What is gospel or what is Adventist music? And what makes it gospel or what makes it Adventist? Is it the text? Is it the rhythm? Is it the composer? Because if it's the composer, even the hymn book, the composers were not Adventist. Is it the performer which makes it Adventist? And why do we claim to make it ours? Is it the tonic sulfur notation? We have quavers and semi quavers single pitched rhythms. And sometimes when you increase the tempo, you will say people have a problem as if we have an ambassador who came from heaven and say, this is the way things should be presented. I like it. When they, if you go to Revelation, I've cited it in passing, you realize that when Christ comes, all the instruments will be there. I've never seen, if you read it, if time would permit, you would see what an orchestra Christ would bring. That can make the bassoon, the double tuba, the cellos, all the instruments, they will be there. Wind instruments, drummings will be there. But you have seen that we have a problem. It is not in the, it is not the vessel that has the problem, but the hands in who, who in, uh, in whose hands is the vessel in. I repeat, it is not in the vessel, but the one who is using the vessel. Because sometimes when we look at the vessel that has been used, the instrument that has been used, we demonize it. God did not recreate people, but he convert people. You realize that God, David continues to use the same harp from the verse that I used. We don't hear that David was worshipped, but when he sang the song, the harp, the evil spirit went out. Remember, it, we start to hear when David was anointed. And he did not drop what he was doing, even the style of prayer, the skill, the perfectness. We have people who are teaching fine the music. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with the knife. I repeat, there's nothing wrong with the knife. But in whose knife is the hands? In, 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 in whose hands is the knife? We use it as a cutlery when it's in the hands of a good person. But we can also see it as a weapon that can kill someone when it's in the wrong hands. Same with the drums, same with the guitar, same with the pianos. However, I should say there are specific uh, sacred instruments that I'm going to highlight in passing. When we are going to worship God, there are specific instruments that has been, and we look at origin, origin of other specific instruments. I, I will, if time would permit, I would dwell much on that one. Uh, I want to move. We, we, we sometimes de demonize African regalias and we holinized, I called this word, Western idea, ideological practice. And so when people come to the wedding wearing uh, traditional attire, we see them as, hey, we shun them. 
But when we have people coming with a wedding gown, white as if it's purity, it's holiness, uh, graduation, if someone graduates without a gown and a cap, we see them as nothing, they have not achieved anything, anything, uh, Adventist coming in suit and tie. Uh, the practice, I said Adventism is a culture, you start to see that the practice of tie is, is, is just vanishing. There is much that is spiritually uplifting and religious, valid in the music of various culture and ethnic groups. However, the musical test and practice of all should conform to the universe, uh, universe of value of Christ-like character and also should strive for oneness in spirit for the purpose of the gospel, which calls for unity rather than uniformity. Care must be exercised. That worldly values in music will fail to express the high ideal of Christian faith. Uh, we should always know that it brings us together. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. What was the tone when David wrote this song? Remember, David was not, when I read, I can say, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord and make. As we read, we read this psalm and yet we are supposed to sing. We don't know what was the harmon. We don't know the instrument that was used. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. This is a psalm. This was a song. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and the harp. How I wish you know the sound of the trumpet. Where, you, know, you know, when we see police bands singing and playing, we, we, you can feel the vibrations of their instruments. But however, I have seen something in our culture. We have a problem when people bring the same orchestra in church. We say it's too noise, but when it comes to math master guides and pathfinder, we will be going and marching. And if you want to see how people have a desire and want to dance, you will see them. They are always suppressing their emotions. As if clapping and saying amen is sin. I don't know. Praise him with sounding symbols. Praise him with the loud clashing symbols. If you have, if time would permit, uh, on the drum, we have a snare drum, a side drum, we have got high heads, we have clash symbols. If you look at how what David was calling for this one, it was a real orchestra that was, and it come to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played in, with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed. Uh, I have seen that not everyone can do that. That's why you see that there are people who are separated and sanctified who can do this. I was at a specific group during our research is for four years, I stayed with people who played traditional music for ritual purposes. We could not play the instruments. That's why you realize that there are specific instruments that are for sacred as well as for secular. They are even for initiation ceremonies, not, not everyone, specific drums. When the, when the, uh, the king dies, a specific instrument is played. We have the 21 gun salute with that sound is an imitation of the instrument, the instrument that was played uh, by the one who was supposed to be there, the watchman. You realize that instruments, they knew that when an instrument is played, it signifies or it symbolizes a specific function. The overriding principle comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Which means that all music the Christian listens to, whether sacred or secular, will glorify God. Anything that cannot meet this high standard will weaken our experience with him. We cannot judge and say, this type of music is, but the, what, what is the motive? Are you doing it to the glory of God or you are doing it only for personal glory? And the music should bring glory to God and assist us in uh, acceptably worshiping, and it should also uh, uplift us and purify the Christian thoughts and influence Christians in the development of a Christ-like character and have a text or a wedge, a lyrics or the message which is in harmony with the spiritual teachings of the church. You will realize that may, most of the songs that we demonize, this is the yardstick to judge. Does it have the text? Does the lyrics 
and the message is each in harmony with the church. And there are some songs that we try to coin them to make them be in harmony with the state. Uh, I remember when I was studying the history of uh, a cappella from jazz to the New Orleans to the Bessie Smiths, and then when they move on to the Mississippi Islands, and there's a song that we see in church. Uh, I, I, I'm challenging you young people to go and see whether that song is what you think. We close our eyes, we 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 we, we move in spirit, swing low, swing chariot, coming to carry me home. You see the vibrato when people are singing. And sometimes I just look at people and I smile. I wish you know the composer. That song had nothing to do with the home of heaven. They were wishing to come back to Africa. As the train coaches were coming, they were swinging low. The chariots were coming to check them. The home that they were referring to was Africa. It has nothing to do with heaven. But however, maybe because of the motive, you know it better, right? It should, we should shun it theatrical and prideful uh, display. When we are in a worship environment, we should be shut. They are where we show a Benaya Abinari when they were showing their uh, uh, war skills, perfecting them, and you know what they were doing. If you are at a wedding, be at a wedding, perform songs at a wedding, because that is for that specific. We praise people, look at how they are, they, they, how beautiful they are. There are songs that are sung to help the bride and the groom to move together. It should give precedence in the message of the text, which should not be overpowered by a company, a company musical a, 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 a instruments. There's a time where we have instrumental music. There's a time where we have soft music that will be going and it should maintain judicial balance of the emotion, intellectual and the spiritual elements, right? These quotations are purely when we are looking at sacred music. It doesn't apply always. When we are waking, we want work songs, harvest songs, war songs. The children of Israel, remember, they were marching and they blew the trumpet. They did not blow them nice, softly and tenderly. There is a specific function to see that people were confused. They were confused by the sound. It really means that there was a specific art and style of performing this. All right, it should never compromise the principle of dignity and excellence. Uh, in the efforts to reach people just there, right? You realize it should be appropriate for the occasion, the setting, the audience for which it is intended. Uh, young people, evangelism is clear, appropriate for the occasions. At wedding, we sing, wedding, we perform, not as people who are entering the Holy of the Holies, we perform as people who are at a wedding. When we are going to work, we work, we perform, we dress for work, we sing for work. Um, I'm not going to cite uh, examples just for the purpose I've put a disclaimer. Uh, if we were on another side of the world, I would present this with specific example. I was going to play specific instruments. There are instruments that moves outside the common one. Tina, CEO, Seven, Zela, Jesu. When the Dockers women are singing the song, they sing specific song. They don't sing sweet, sweet hour of prayer. It should be specific. Doctrine of change being central to the universe contains that everything gives flow and nothing stands still. Everything gives away and nothing stays fixed. All is a watch, a flask, and nothing stays the same. You will realize this quotation, change management is a structural approach for transition individuals' terms. There are many times that we, we see people don't want to accept change. They just want to be rigid, even if they have received the truth. When we are youth, youth should sing youth songs, you should be vibrant, and you should present songs for that specific uh, function. And the change is doing things differently. Change is the process of moving from one state of current affair. We have a current state and also have a transition. Where there is no transition, when there is change, there is what? New behavior, new mind shift, new... Uh, we have to discontinue. The reason why most people, young people are moving out of the church today is because church is becoming irrelevant. 
And people always want to stay on the sacred and sacred and sacred and sacred as if there are no specific occasions. You go to a children's uh, chapel, you want to have long sermons and then songs that are very low, the liturgy, the chanting, the specific songs are meant for specific occasions. Uh, I'll ask uh, Sister Melissa to attend to the chat box. I see something that is coming there. There's time for change. When the rate of change outside exceed the rate of change inside, the end is in sight. When the rate of change outside exceed the rate of change inside, the end is in sight. As young people, remember, we always preach young people are the ones who bring reformation. And within the church, we should now try, the time has come for us to, for the church to know that music is for specific occasion and for specific functions. When we are, it's only the dockers that are allowed to show movement when they are going, but the movement is also restricted. We don't have an ambassador. Christ never said, stop this. We focus on the dons and not the do's. Why should we change? Change is the only constant. And if we fail to change with the world, we simply, we will simply become much irrelevant and outdated. Commandments of the, they were written on the stones, on the straws. And if you can't say bring the straws, the scrolls to the church, we move. Instrumentation also should change because we have keyboards that have been accepted and the drums are not even accepted. And when people play drums in on a keyboard, it is acceptable. When I play my congas on the keyboard, it's acceptable. I am a nyunga nyunga empira maker, but when you when you see someone holding empira, you see someone who is if who is too backward, who is doing the amateurs. It has nothing to do. An instrument is an instrument, and organizations are no longer protected by the distance, and we should move on. Uh, if you look at this one, there is a change that is very slow, and some some of them that is very boring, and it goes up and downs, and then it breaks because people don't want to change. The need for change. We have a current. And then there is a transition. Why? Look at where there is a future, there is a vision. What is the vision of the church? In heaven, all the instruments will be there. And the, we have read the text. But in our church, we have restrictions on the instruments. And you realize that many things that we say are not in line. And why should we change? There is an era, end of the era, and there's a transition. And you realize that we something has to end, die down, so that something comes out. And when it comes out, what happens when something dies down? Because there's a lot of confusion. Young people are saying, where are we going? There's a lot of anger. And people are restricted. When you are happy, and you, it means like being an Adventist culture is Adventists are being seen as people who will never be happy. The people who always be, becomes rigid and people, and then people becomes confused. They, the anger comes in. And when there's a transition now, there's a lot of confusions and anxiety and frustration is there. Why is it that young people are singing like this? Why is it that people are bringing this? People used to go for care meeting in the bush. They still want to, to go for care meeting and stay in the plastic bags as if holiness is in the plastic and they, when they are sleeping. And when you bring chalice, transition is coming. People will say, wow, what's this? Where are they going? But you remember when the new beginning comes, it brings relief. However, there still be some people who are still not sure. Re remember, the accomplishments, high energy, learning, excitement is coming. The new beginning is coming. Christ, as long as we are still just a realm away, we are still following the principles and the precepts to the law and to the testimony. What, are, what is the main focus? The focus is to worship God and God alone. And we want happiness. In heaven, we will be there. Change is good. Don't be left alone. And look at this one. When we, to those people, it says 5%. I like this one. Uh, one of my doctors in the Cape Peninsula invest when he's presenting this one. I love it. The Christians, in the, especially the Adventists, change agent is brought by 5%. And these people, they create a change and they challenge others. They enjoy the challenge of the change. They look for solution. They believe it can happen. And 90% will not change alone. They don't understand change and the, the need for it. They will just follow. They need to be coached. They need to be supported. They need to be expired. This is the 90% of the people who stays here. They are not so sure. They don't accept. They don't even challenge. 
and 5% dislike change. And these are the diehards who can even stand and say to the law and to the testimonies, they are even custodians, they are even police officers, and they are the guardians. And they stay, they prevent change, they make excuses, and they undermine change. And they look for problems always. When young people are happy, there will be a problem. But 5% is bringing change. Which one are you? Strategies for managing reactions for change. There's denial, gain power through information, then resistance, stop spinning your wheels, exploration, ventures into uncharted territory, commitment, keep the momentum. Change is definite. I pause for now. That was very powerful, Elder. Thank you so much for the well-researched, uh, well-thought-out presentation that you have just given us. I, I really wish this was shared in a lot of our home churches uh, because, you know, we do get this problem as young people where, you, you, you know, you can't even worship God in liberty and in, you know, that freedom to be able to, when a song is, is you know, is, is touching you or you, you are relating certain experiences to it and you want to express yourself, you, you always looked in, at in another way. So now we feel like, okay, so I can't worship food in church then because there's these sort of, you know, connotations towards certain things. So I really appreciate the fact that there is still uh, some elders in the church that are progressive and that, you know, they bring the slides to us to say, listen, we are not lost, we're not a lost cause, you know, because sometimes you, the, the, the day I discovered that most of our, our songs in the hymn book are not even from us, that's when I started to even appreciate, you know, more artists outside of the, of, of, of our Adventist faith, and because their songs bear, bear the message that is relevant and that is godly and biblical, so I really appreciate that this presentation, um, uh, covered all of that and we we hope that the 90 percent <laughs> will not let the five percent uh you know fall or you know completely give up on the faith altogether because of the of the rigid uh you know vibes that they bring so i see there is two hands i'm going to unmute gift and ash and sk Um, thank you very much for such a lovely uh, presentation, my elder. Uh, it's really, it opened my eyes. It's really in, um, oh, eye-opening. Um, especially when you were mentioning the parts of the specific music for specific um, occasions. I remember in the Bible where there was a, a wedding, where um, it was a four-day wedding. You wouldn't expect in such a wedding to sing sweet hour of prayer when people were celebrating. So they had to celebrate because of a celebration. Even when David himself was celebrating on the roads, other people judged him for dancing there. Um, so I, I, I like your presentation very much. Even you spoke of Songs of Solomon. Most people like to uh, spiritualize their bedroom issues and start to think of also sweet hour of prayer instead of putting the specific music for that specific occasion. So thank you very much, my elder. Um, I will also, um, I learned a lot and it, it was really eye-opening. I hope this message can actually reach out more people because more people, when they see instruments in the church, they tend to close up. Um, but when God comes, the trumpets shall sound. So when the trumpets sound, are the same people going to run away from the trumpets because it's an instrument and it's demonic, but it is a trumpet sounding for Christ is coming. So thank you very much for your um, presentation. It's really, really uh, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, SK. Happy Sabbath, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, no. well, thanks for, for the presentation. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just thinking as um, our presenter is presenting, I think what causes a lot of havoc when it comes to music and how it should be sung and how in the dancing and stuff, 
I think it's, it's a matter of exposure. Because uh, <clears throat> even if it's not secular music, maybe let's say the sacred, sacred music uh, in different places and different cultures, still Adventist, they sing it differently. <clears throat> um, like today I had another song, um, I think it's number 11 on the uh, Christ is Love uh, the, the guy was singing it in a very different tune. And I could see that these guys, the guys who were joining in, like they were so into spirit, you know. And uh, <clears throat> um, the same song was sang uh, when I was in uh, somewhere in Newcastle and with a different tune and 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 people they were so into spirit in, because of that tune like all of like this is the same song different different tune and different notes um <clears throat> so what I'm, I'm my point is that like i think it's a matter of exposure um if we we expose ourselves to the world and to Adventism as a whole, I think I think we will understand that um, <clears throat> not all songs are evil, not all songs are demonic. Uh, I think we should really need to have exposure, especially maybe our elders, that they don't even know how to expose themselves to internet. You know, if they can somehow come up uh, <clears throat> with ways of exposing themselves into 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 the world we might not have these problems of uh, of music and saying this is adventist music this is gospel music this is not because for real for real what is gospel music thank you hey, if i if i may ask my brother thank you for raising this what makes adventist music adventist I pose that question. Maybe if somebody can 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 respond to that. Hello, Melissa. Hi. Hi. Okay, no, I, oh, sorry. I had muted. Um, I think I also need need an, an answer to that. Um, or maybe we have to discuss on it. What what right. what is Adventist music? All right, you you realize that I I will be very blunt, short, and to the point. There are I I have raised this. There are so many songs that we sing that are not ours, that were not composed by us. So to claim that they are ours is it because us who are I have a problem personally, which is a subject of another day, uh, where we become exclusive, we claim exclusive rights for everything as Adventism. I can say this boldly. In my church, uh, I've been reprimanded. <laughs> Let me say this one. Where I said, let's stop spiritualizing matters of life every day. We have music that are good, and when a song is started by someone who is not an Adventist, we shun that type of music. At funerals, we don't want, we want them to sing our music even in their own funerals, forgetting that this is a sacred uh, occasion where people should be, should be brought together. The reason why people repel from Adventism is we claim exclusive rights for things that are not even ours. So, as long as the music is, has nothing to do with blasphemy and it gives praise to God and it leads someone to worship. I was singing this morning, this, I played this song. I'm trying to look for that song. I'll play it if I find it right now. That song, as you sing, when the legend of Pumelel was singing, you could see when someone was saying, touch my faith, Lord. And all Naku Konga Kwam, you'd see you'd see, and even the crowd knelt down. And there was another song that was sung by, by Spoo. 
uh, actually I'm documenting this uh, gospel music in Southern Africa, doing my researches at advanced, where I'm looking at the type of music that can bring people to worship. I literally saw people weeping. And when you speak to people say, I believe, Lord, help me, I'm a sinner. Who says it's only the Adventist reign or search up which brings people to heaven? We claim exclusive rights of songs. We claim exclusive rights of heaven. And my Bible is very clear. And I saw many that cannot be numbered by men entering heaven. And when you preach, you always say, we are the only one. We are the only one. I will say it bluntly. The remnant message is there, but we, we, we are the remnant church, but not the remnant people. Because Christ never said, guys, I am the only son of God, and I will take you alone. When we exclude others, we cease to be God's people. When our music excludes other, other people, we cease to be doing Christ's will. Have this heart that was in Christ. The song Inyang Enkulu by this Zimbabwean guy, Eva John Mulalas, I may send a comment. I'm not advertising here, but you can go and see where I did an analysis of this one, even on the, on, on, on the YouTube, you realize that because the song incorporated Soweto Gospel Choir and the orchestration that was done brought a new light. And look here, people in camp meetings, they are moving with the songs, but we still have that 90% which is too confused. It's only 5% that brought the light. And this 5% which is now standing and says no, Unless Christ comes down and tell us, we don't have an ambassador from heaven. Who has been there to heaven? Who says this is how things are done in heaven? Unless we have one from heaven, mm -hmm. please let people worship God freely. The motive is the one. Are they worshiping God? Are they communing with God? Are they being brought together to God? If the answer is yes, let it be. If you don't have the answer, let the weeds and the tails grow together. Christ will judge on the last day. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Elder, for that uh, powerful comment. Uh, I think another thing that we also struggle with in the Adventist circle is being right. We, 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 we scale each other against who's more right, who's doing it. Right with who? Uh, with with the standards that we have set, you know, the culture. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's always biblical. I don't know if it's uh, always to the glory of God. But we we, we have this problem of, of wanting to be right. And those that are more enlightened uh, sometimes judge those who are not. And obviously those who are not enlightened judge most often right so i think our problem is trying to convince each other that my revelation and my conviction on this topic or on this uh thing is is more superior than yours so this is how we need to be and i always say to people that uh like we we we, we group ourselves nowadays there is the apparently there's the conservatives there's the liberal adventists so there's always this clash where the liberals, um, you know, uh, they are often termed the woke ones, the more open to dancing and more open to doing the things that are not considered as the culture or the traditional Adventism. And then there's the conservative ones who apparently are upholding this standard that is the culture or the norm, right? So these two groups often try to convince each other to 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 the other way right to say okay you guys are doing this you shouldn't be doing that then the the the, the liberals are also on the vibe of you guys are judgmental you guys are like this so my issue is god is so like god is so broad and we can't contain worship in a specific way like because it's unique to everyone if you read the bible the experiences of david job and abraham and jacob if you were to put them all in one room they would probably give you a different picture of god individually it might all lead to all the characteristics of god so i think sometimes the problem is that we 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 want a standardized way for us all that is i don't know if it's biblical or not <laughs> so I, I think it's just always a push and pull on 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 these uh topics 
where you're in chat, when you look at someone who's dancing, you can see others are looking at them with the judging eye. The one that's dancing is probably thinking these ones are stiff. <laughs> so, so then, you know, how do we free ourselves from that mentality? Like, how do we progress from allowing each other in our individuality, in our convictions? Because worship is personal. You know, worship is your favorite song may not be my favorite song. Your tune may not be the tune that blesses me or the tune that, you know, makes me relate or connect to God. So I think that understanding, Jay, I don't know how we can arrive at that. Okay, I see Van Heren, your hand is up. I'm going to unmute you. Hi. Um, you know, um, even within the church, there is, uh, we need to realize that there, are, there is taste. Um, the music that uh, you like may not necessarily be the music that I like. If uh, you like uh, Inyang Yankulu uh, ears, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I like it as well, even though it uh, is in the hymn book. Uh, it might be a song that, uh, uh, given a chance to be the chorus of the day, I'll skip over and uh, choose a, another one. But uh, having said that, it would be totally inappropriate to then uh, bring a uh, remixed version of uh, a piano song. Uh, and uh, when I say piano, I'm, I mean that I'm a piano and then remix Inyang and Kulu so that it becomes appealing. And I think that's where we have a push and pull a lot within the church in, the, in this day and age, because uh, uh, someone would then argue that uh, you are taking a song straight from the club and then trying to baptize it uh, in the in the church so that it becomes acceptable. So are we are we then saying that uh, that uh, people should accommodate one another in such in such an instance? Um, having said that as well, there's a song that uh, I used to like by. Oh, well, I still like it by a cappella. I'm, I'm speaking now to the issue of that uh, swing low, uh, Sweet Chariot. By the way, I've even sang that song in a group that I used to sing with. I've sang that song in church and I didn't know what it meant. I just thought it was a Christian song. But there's this song here, Look Every Voice and Sing. It's a Negro song and uh, it's been brought into our church and uh, I'm sure many groups have sang it. And uh, that song there, I loved it like no one's business until uh, some time back, I came across another a version of the song that was done by um, uh, Al Green, I think, and Denise uh, Williams. And then at the end of the song, it then says the song is sponsored by, um, I've forgotten this American, uh, this American beer. Let's just assume it's uh, supported by Heineken. It then, imagine someone having heard me present that song uh, the previous week in church. Then they happen to go on YouTube and there we get a, the song that I sang last week in church is on YouTube and it was done by Denise uh, uh, Williams for Heineken. How then uh, does that help the cause uh, of uh, spreading the gospel, if we could put it that way? Can, can I come in on that one? Thanks, Van Hidden, for that song, for that contribution. I'll be very... Uh, just go straight forward. God is not interested in the truths 
in the avenues that has been used, but is interested in the vessel that is in front of him. You will realize that when David was anointed, God inspired David and he continues to use what he was using to head the kettle. If you go and see the history, if you go and see the instrument that were used, there's no change. What I want to say is there's, no, there's nothing in this world that we use that is holy. Most of the clothes that you are wearing on a holy Sabbath might not have been made by a, an Adventist. And the, the, the brand that sponsored it might not have been an Adventist. The money that we are using, even the one that you use uh, for, for offering today, is some of them was, was even generated from the tobacco option floor. A JSC is not an Adventist. So when we, when, when we want to, 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 to quell it to suit what we want, God does not need money. God does not need the composers. He is looking at the vehicle that is using. That's why I'm saying the same building. That's why you can buy a bottle store today and change it to become a church. In other words, you are saying because it was used by other avenues. And God it, it does not even enter into those buildings. He looks at the hearts of the people who are worshiping him. That's why you see that a Roman soldier was even regarded as the man who was God-fearing, but he was amongst the people who were not even worshiping. And if you look at that woman who, was, who, who took care of the spies, Rahab was saved, was she in a, in a whole environment. So we go to the extreme and want to dig down. Most of the people who sponsor our lives, even the companies who are sponsoring us, if the people, everyone could know, can take an inventory, you might see that we don't qualify to be in church. If people know where we spend our, most of our days, and if they know the product that you are making as a chemical scientist who is praying, God, give me power to, 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 to be innovative and to be, to be outstanding, if they would know what is going to be produced later on. So many vehicles that were made by people who are God-fearing, they have killed many. So if we want to go to the extremes like that way, it becomes problematic. I'm telling you, the occasion was proper. The, the way why you see, you can even see on YouTube, I'm, I'm looking the impact of uh, uh, modern technology on the spread of the gospel and music. I do analysis on, online. I'll give example. The reason if it appeals to many and it brings men together, God is the God of love, a God of unity. Sometimes we judge and say, this is not, this is not. I gave you a book of Esther in the Song of Solomon. There's not one word about God, but it brings people together. Sometimes we spiritualize God has created us as social beings. We should praise our loved ones. Sing songs of praise. Even the songs can be more of a viral than Jerusalem dance. If I'm praising my wife, do you think, am I idolizing her? No, we should praise nature. We praise God. When we are waking, let's sing songs. Let's not restrict ourselves only for what. Then we cease to be human. The wedding where Jesus went to Cana, we don't know. Maybe I, you, you may help me. They were preaching nonstop. Specific occasion. Let's understand that. And that's why on this you see secular and sacred. They are so inyang and cool. Because if you see the ushering of the trumpet, the three single pated rhythm, the one, two, three, one, two, three, the tempo that was used, that's why you see the song appeals to men because it appeals to the occasion. It's a celebratory song. It means we are not going to celebrate on this earth. We wait until we get to heaven. And some of you are not even going to make it to heaven. God created us to celebrate even on this world. We should celebrate birthdays. We sing birthday songs. I don't know if I've answered you. Unless we sing, we cease to be human. 
Thank you so much uh, for that, Elda. I'm going to take um same hands again. Um, brother SK and then Gifton Ash. And the fun here in SU hands as well. Hello. Um, I, have, I, have, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Because I heard what uh, Fan had inside um, <clears throat> that uh, we we are in church and suppose maybe one one soloist uh, is using instruments and now the instruments they they, they well the beat actually the beat of of, <clears throat> of the song that is going to sing is the one that is popular in the world at that time. Um, like, as you said, we would have a piano. <clears throat> so there will be a piano hit song. And then the Adventist soloist decide to take the beat of that song and start singing Christ in song um, <clears throat> for that. Now, how do we deal with that? Um, well, but that's not my question. My question is on I once had someone I which I thought it was powerful. Um, but like as we're studying, it's just with I guess the truth is progressive. I once had someone say Zoguti, he was answering the question why Adventists don't they don't sing exciting songs. Even though they are singing an exciting song, they don't follow the excitement. Something along those lines. And the person also quoted the quotation where Ellen White said in the character care meeting, there was drums and music and screaming. <clears throat> it was some sort of a lot of commotion and excitement. And she was actually, she was um, rebuking that to say, Things like that will come just at the end. And so so <clears throat> now this person was responded and said, Adventists, they don't do exciting music. Based on the seven feasts, those 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 Passover, leaven bread, uh, Pentecost and all that. Now he said that um, we're still celebrating um in the Amato God, a care meeting, because care meeting has not yet met its anti whatever, what it meant or what it represented, what it represents. So he says the care meeting represents one day we will celebrate with our loved ones forever. That's why it's seven days. <clears throat> and then now he says we are not yet there, therefore, Adventist. They don't focus on excitement and celebrating because now it's time for investigative judgment. So there's we we are not really supposed to focus on exciting music and celebrating because it's not the time. So the person also went further to say, even from Psalms 145 to Psalms 150, is um David was celebrating the restoration of the law of God, uh, which symbolizes Uti. For now, we are not yet, the law of God is not yet restore, restored on earth. Hence, uh, Uti David didn't sing those songs at the beginning or in the middle of his psalms. He sang it at the end. So which means we will also, <clears throat> we'll also celebrate when Jesus comes. We'll also dance and be excited after the sin is gone, as the sin has been done away with. Now, as Adventists, we are supposed to focus on investigating ourselves and also focusing on telling others that uh, there is a judgment that is going on, people should repent. So, <clears throat> yeah, so with in light with what you've, our speaker has just said, I'm just trying to connect the two right now. Uh, how do we how do we come about and how to harmonize these? That like a church, we have the same understanding of what what 
to sing and how to sing it. Uh, like exclusively just on church. I'm not talking about other events, church events, but like maybe on Sabbath, how do we <clears throat> go about with the one, the information that I just shared now? Thanks. May, may I put my brother Gugu on the spot to respond to that one before I forget? I have something that I want to say, but let's give brother Gugu to respond to that one. Okay. Uh, Chief. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, I hope I'm audible. Um, I didn't quite catch all of what uh, Mr. SK was saying there, but um, the idea that uh, we are the church militant, we are not yet the church triumphant, that idea has, has place. Um, if we're going to, to be miserable Christians because we are not yet triumphant, then that's even a disservice to the gospel itself. Um, <clears throat> we, <laughs> when, when Jesus was on a mission to, to go and destroy Sodom, and he was walking with some angels, though they were in human form, um, they're working with um, Abraham and then they act as if they want to proceed and Abraham pleads with them to come in and he finally, you know, gets food prepared for them and, and stuff like that. <laughs> what kind of food do we think they ate there? Do you think they ate vegetarian sausages? Do you think um, they were just talking about you know, spiritual, theological issues, what kind of conversations were, were, were going on, you know? Um, so I think we have a very problematic concept of, of, of who God is. And then that also tends to inform how we want to, to relate to him. Um, the idea of some artist picking up a, some secular tune and now using it for the gospel. Uh, before, before I can even go to the contents of what will be going on there, the issue is why, is, why would that be our area of focus? Why is that the biggest thing on our minds? You see, that is, that is where the problem is. We, we should be so focused on Christ to a point where we, we don't hear such things, we don't see such things. When young people go to the front to sing, we are so focused on, on, on Christ and, and happy that they are here with us at church to the point where we care less about really what they go there up to do. Someone is going to say, no, but we cannot allow chaos. We cannot allow the church's standards, blah, blah, blah. The reason we get angry and we want to, I mean, on behalf of God, and we want to take over is because we have not experienced the love of God and we have not experienced its transforming power. If we had experienced the transforming power of God's love, we would relax and know that Jesus is beautiful enough to turn gangsters into saints. But if we've not experienced that ourselves, then we want to, to take over. We think God is slow. We think God is too understanding. We want to be in charge. That is my response. Thank you so much. I, I, I have another statement. Why do we focus on one thing and then at the same time we, we we overlook the other. The same people we, who says the church is militant, we are, we are going to the throne of mercy. There's no time to celebrate. We haven't celebrated. Then, so why do we marry? Why do we go to school? Why do we do all other things? And why do we go to work? So sometimes we, we tend to put ourselves blingers. There is no way we cannot celebrate 
Jesus should have condemned even that wedding at Cana because time was not there. Let's not try to interpret the spirit of prophets to suit what we want. It's like God enjoys to see us suffering every time and to, 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 to see us looking miserable. I was, as Brother Gugu was presenting, I, I just go on. You can even go to your Bible. You see that Ab, even Abraham rushed to get a fattened uh, calf. I don't know whether it was for an offering and he was just a sacrifice. And yet the Bible says he slaughtered the fetten for him. And was Jesus going to use sin as an example? On the prodigal son, he slaughtered a fetten. Why did he use the word fetten? Why did he put those, those emphasis? You know, there are certain times where we create things uh, which, which becomes difficult. It, Christ never focused on those things. I, I said, let me repeat, the main emphasis is for the people to be brought to God. And remember the occasion. Why did he perform a specific miracle of wine at Cana and not healing the sick there? Occasion is very important. Uh Thank you so much. I'm going to unmute Gift and Ash. Um, thank you again. I, I just have a, a story that uh, someone once told me of, um, it's, it's regarding uh, time for change, you know. So it's told that there's a mom who, when she would slaughter a chicken, she would tell the daughter, never mix the chicken with the gizzards and the feet. You must never do that. So when the daughter grew up, she also thought maybe there's, there's something happens when you mix the chicken with the chicken feet and the gizzards and the hearts. She also taught the daughter, never mix the chicken with the hearts, gizzards, and just you must cook them separately. Now the daughter who's the granddaughter of the original person who said never mix was inquisitive. And she said, but why mom shouldn't I mix these? And then she's like, no, I was taught by my mom that you should never, that's why I'm teaching you. Then the granddaughter goes to the mom and asks, why don't I have to mix these two? And the mom says, because I prefer it that way. It's not like a rule that something might happen. The point I'm driving at is when Christian music, Adventist music, uh, uh, sorry, Adventist music started, it started I think we've watched the, the movie where Ellen White and how, how Adventist uh, church started. It started in the Western side. When it started, they were not used to people who can sing loud. Their culture, what they were used to, what they, were pref what they preferred is to sing like how Baptists used to sing. But if you look at the uh, Black Americans, because when they were taken as slaves from Africa going to America, they used to sing those Negro songs to, because they were hurt and they would comfort themselves with song. Even when you go to their churches, they sing out loud, they praise God wholeheartedly because that is now what they are used to. But the issue with us Africans, because we love America so much, we love what they've taught us. When we now deviate from what, um, how singing was, you look, they look at you as if you are being demonic. They can accept a CD where there is instruments, a CD, like if a soloist is gonna say, I've got a, a, a CD, it's a back, um, what you call it, a background song. And you find in that CD, there's drums, there's everything in that CD. They'll accept it as long as it's background. But the moment you bring the drums, the cymbals, everything, and the same soloist wants to sing and the same type of background will still be there. It, everything changes. Then they're like, no why should there be drums but it's the same background song that you're going to do as africans we also have our way of singing but now we are suppressing that way of singing because western says jesus never wore a tie but because the western culture says we should wear a tie now we think that is what adventism is all about what about our african africanness are we suppressing who we are as africans 
being Adventist, worshiping God doesn't mean that you should follow a certain tribe's way of singing. You have got your own way of singing. They like it the way they do. Like it's the same as I might like um, King's Heralds. Then the next person might uh, like a uh, heritage singers. The next person might like a cappella. Uh, and the next person might like take six. We are all praising God at the end of the day. Don't judge me for liking my taxi. Don't judge them for liking King's Herod. As the elder said, as long as it, as it is intended for God, as long as it is intended for God, it is not against God. It is still acceptable. But the issue with us Adventists, Adventists is that we like to have narrow minds. We like to think this is how we were taught growing up. This is how we should be. You shouldn't question why it is like that. I think we should change. And I like the elder saying it is time for change. So we shouldn't always think because it was what it was instilled in me, I mustn't question it. It is time for change. Thank you. Thanks, Gift. And uh, sorry to just jump in. You have reminded me something very quick. Uh, is, it, is it proper to use in the apartheid style of worship in church? Stretch to my point. The origin of a cappella, I remember all the slaves in the Mississippi Islands, they were not allowed to touch instruments. And the master could not allow under what circumstance you were going to be killed or punished. And because they love to imitate these instruments, that's why they started to use their voices to imitate instruments because they were not allowed, they were under oppressed. Now we have Adventism, which magnifies a cappella more as if we are still under the slave trade and we highlighted it and they have reminded me those songs like this song that was popular for shower power chup 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 they were instrument in the double bass that was played by louis armstrong because they were not allowed to are we still being forced or being penalized for using instruments. Why are we not using instruments? Instead of imitating the instrument with your mouth, take the instrument and play it. And remember, culture, our president says, we should appreciate cultural diversity. Western people, they don't have rhythm. It's well-documented, well-presented. They have chairs when they are singing, they wait until finish, they clap, that's their best. We as Africans, there's no onlooker, there's no spectator. The moment you start, I join in, I'm with you. We move with you, we are to in togetherness. That's why the text says, as long as we bring people together, he judge Africans with the Africans for the Africans by the Africans. There is no sin in this because Christ, everything was in Africa. I'm not preaching Africanism here, I am saying, as Africans, we sing whilst we are working. Whereas Africa, where's the Western culture says, keep quiet, we want to see the product. We move together with music. That's why we sing these songs together. Powerful, powerful. Um, Van Heeren. Okay. Um, Will you allow me to play just three songs? And yes. then I'll comment. Okay, this is the first one. That's Amazing Grace. Okay, the next song. Okay, the third one. These are this is all amazing grace. Okay, and now uh, my question still stands. You you said you said you hope you've answered me and. I still feel that you haven't answered. I said that uh, now these songs are taken straight from the club and brought into church and presented in church. Would that be appropriate? 
And uh, if you are saying, uh, by the way, uh, Google uh, touched on that a bit, and uh, I would respectfully uh, disagree with him on that. If he is going to say that, uh, why should the focus uh, be on someone who is, why should the focus be on the presentation of that song? Like I said, this is a song taken straight from the club and brought into church. And if your answer is that uh, God doesn't care about the, the instrument that is used, but he rather is concerned with the vessel itself, which is uh, me, then uh, I would be the first to say I have a problem with that because we cannot take uh, something that is in the club and then try to baptize it and present it as being sacred before the Lord. Um, of the front, a hand from to... Google. Okay. Okay. Um. Thank you. Uh, just a few thoughts that I want to submit. Um, <clears throat> the first being that my, my prayer and wish is that we would mature as, as, as a religion, if that's what we are, we would mature as a church to a point where such programs are not necessary. But I'm afraid such programs are of paramount necessity and importance in our church today because uh, <laughs> of the different challenges that you can sort of glean just listening to the different inputs uh, in this very particular platform. But my, my prayer is <laughs> we should aim for a, a church experience, a spiritual experience with God where such, you know, debates are not even necessary, you know. Um, there's a reason why jazz music is banned in, in North Korea, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the spirit of wanting to control how a free moral being must express him or herself to their God does not come from heaven. It comes from the devil. It comes from hell. <laughs> Even in our very own churches, the spirit of wanting to police human expression comes from hell. That is why you can't play jazz if you're in North Korea. You are not allowed as a pianist to play jazz because there's something liberating about music. There's something powerful about music. Jazz at a high level appreciation, um, Elder Francis is, is the musician here, but at a very high level appreciation, jazz is, it's just a genre that makes use of all the 12 keys that we have in music, the minor, the minors and mm -hmm. the majors, and then you have your chromatic mm -hmm. scale. And because jazz embraces all that, that God has created in the spectrum of music, it is very rich, it is, it is a powerful genre. And now people that don't understand that genre would have a problem with that, with that type of music, and they would spiritualize their problems with that. But they have never read a book on music. They don't understand what, what F means in music, you know? Um, and, and I have a problem with that. I think sometimes at Adventists, we need to, the humility that says, you know what, it's okay, it's Christ-like to say, listen, this is not my area. Can I be educated about music? And then can I read a book? Can I just read up? Can I? Can I listen, you know, as Adventists, like um, Francis was saying, we, we have monopolized and appropriated things that are not ours and made them as if we're ours. You know, when I was young, in this church, I was younger, I thought that all the music I enjoyed from a cappella company was from Adventists. I discovered very late in life, no, no, those are not Adventists. But the impression created around that genre is if anything that that you get to like as an Adventist, anything that is nice uh, must, be, must, be, must be Adventist. So, so there's a problem with that. Um, brother uh, Fanny Hidden, um, the church has standards, God has standards. 
so when I was saying that the problem is that being at the top of our minds, I am not by that saying uh, the church has no standards. No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that it is not up to us to want to micromanage people's journeys with their God. That is where I am, I'm at. It takes a certain level of spiritual maturity to appreciate that. You are where you are and you are going to have a problem with that, with that tune you are playing because you say it's from the club. Not all of us are at your level. And it doesn't disqualify our efforts to fellowship and our efforts to express ourselves to God. You don't come anywhere between a human being and how they want to celebrate their God. Now, the standards we have are a shield, not a weapon. What you are doing when you start playing clips and trying to, to, to set a particular standard and impose it, you are actually weaponizing the, the standard. It's just like a knife, a very useful tool in the kitchen. You use it to chop ca cabbages and carrots. But now once you start taking the knife and hitting people with it, it's now a weapon. When we use the music standards like that, we are weaponizing them and we are actually now depopulating the, 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 the collective of people that are trying to make, make it to heaven. We're actually using the standards to hinder people from entering heaven. But God uses standards to bring people to the kingdom. So that is the danger of, it's, it's like the issue at dress reform. It's, it's, it's dress reform is a shield, not a weapon. It's for us to, to, to grow and, 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 and reflect on our relationship with, with God and others and how we, we carry ourselves. It is not for me to pick up and say, you are dressed like this. This is not acceptable in the church. Once I do that, I am weaponizing the standard. I am, I am degrading the standard to a weapon. And I am saying that is a huge problem. And therefore, we, we need to get worried when how people sing, how people dress, what people eat in the Christian experience worries us. And we get angrier than God over that. We, it, it, it says a lot about what we are focusing on. I've, I've also argued that we need to focus so much on Christ on the cross dying for us. So much that we cannot see the lens of the, of the skirts that people are wearing. The reason we are hearing all these wrong items of music, wrong dressing, wrong food, we have lost focus. And, and I'm not dismissing the, the import of stand. I'm simply saying the God I know personally is capable to transform somebody who's listening to that tune from the club into, into whatever God wants that person to be. We run the risk of wanting to supervise the work of the Holy Spirit. We don't know what pace and what journey, what stage the Holy Spirit is with that person. But we must trust that the God we serve is wiser, is gracious, is powerful enough to guide that person through. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on the chat, um, there's a question here to say, what is club music? How do you know it's club music? Um, is it the beat? Is it the lyrics? Uh, if the lyrics, if you put then gospel, lyrics or you know godly lyrics into that <laughs> you know uh what's wrong if it's just you know uh, is there a holy beat what's the standard for the holy beat is there a certain tempo that is prescribed it's, it's a question so i think we can all try and answer that right um can we maybe answer that so we can have a a dialogue on that and see if we come up with okay um i don't know if you wanna answer to this i'm gonna unmute you i hope it's not directed to me we are now discussing discussion yes, you know, discussion yeah 
it's 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 quite interesting what we are doing now. Uh, I, I like young people, you freely express your your perceptions, your views. Uh, it's like we have seen God as a useless being who cannot uh, look after his own creation. We we are more into policing human beings in in, in place of God. So it's, it's like thinking that God cannot do anything. Uh, and yet he is God. He can divine a way, a means and ways to teach people, not for us to be the ones who are on the front. Let's discuss and remember who coiled it to become. You remember we talk of rhythm and blues. Uh, by virtue of uh, his brother Gugu was raising, uh, if you understand the history of music, uh, the origin of the flat notes, they were some some keys, some notes that were labeled as blue notes to say they, when they play, remember, not all notes were there on the tonic scale. So some instruments would not, that's why you say you have more flats on the, on the guitars as compared to others. So when they performed that, they were seen as missing the mark because they would try to play an instrument, a, a, a note which is not there uh, on the instrument. So it was going to be like discordies. Then they would started to bring on the notes which were called dissonance. And then it was now labeled as unacceptable music. I gave you example of Louis Armstrong, Bessie Smith, uh, when they were playing, then they were saying this, this music, to them it was club because Africans were saying, we want to play according to our own flavor, according to our own. And when they started to perform on their own, that music was labeled as, uh, they were deviants, that it was labeled as what? a secular music because it's not sacred according to the standard that was there. So I'm coming closer home to this question. Who labeled is as if? If we can play gospel in a, in a bottle store, is it acceptable? Because let's, let's spin the coin. Is it okay to play church music even our in China and cool? In a, in a pub, in a bottle store, is it proper? What will you say? Because let's not focus, focus on the extreme. I'm spinning the coin to the people who are asking the question. What, is it accept, acceptable to play in a bottle store? Um, so, <laughs> So a uh, funny thing, there's this clip that I, I was watching. Um, it seemed like it's a norm in these clubs. Towards the end uh, of the club, I guess whenever it's about to close, they normally play a gospel song. So I don't know whether they'll be trying to repent from maybe you know feeling bad at the end or what happens, right? But um, I don't know if it's a it's, it's a general norm, but like they 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 seem to always play gospel songs at times in some clubs, right? Not from experience, just I've, I've, I've observed from some clips, right? So I'm just saying that to come back to that, are we saying that drunkards cannot play gospel or in their clubs? To Just to add to your question, Elder. And uh, yes, yes that, that, that is my question to say. Are they, will they be comfortable to see gospel songs be played in the pub? Yeah, so I, I think let's 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 all engage in this. Can can I speak? Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Um. Well. Um. Hey. You know, I I I really appreciate the I recall the presentation. I would I would, I would uh, request if possible, uh, Lisa send it to us, but well, at the permission of the speaker. <clears throat> um, but now, as we're talking, I'm getting more confused. <laughs> now, there is special jazz music. Jazz music, even in Adventist, uh, what do you call Adventist um, statements on music, official statements on music, 
Jazz is, 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 is plainly stated that it should not be part of our music. Um, <clears throat> so I once checked on it and um, I, I was told that jazz it originated with porn and whenever jazz was played and uh, it was it's associated with porn. So that's why I don't, don't really have the full answer to that why Adventists they say they are excluding themselves from <clears throat> from chairs but it's there so i'm talking about this because we could touched on that now the other thing um other thing i'm 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 i'm, I'm getting confused if are we talking of <clears throat> of um worship songs like as in uh, a church or we're talking of the songs that i can play in my car alone my preference uh because someone mentioned about dress code and you the speak also mentioned about policing people um uh, well obviously dress code it's 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 we can't we can't be in harmony dress code wise but in terms of 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 songs we can be that to say now we agree that we are singing hymn number two according to these notes so should someone else come and say, no, I don't want to sing uh, win number two according to those notes. I want to bring my own notes. Uh, now, are we saying we should allow that uh, discord to happen because we're not supposed to police people? Because looking at policing people, there are people who are policing other people, which is true and which is very bad. But at the same time, there is a moral code <clears throat> that everyone, every individual has, that if if you see, um, let's say they invite me to come to come preach and I come wearing shorts, obviously the elders will say, uh -uh, we don't we don't do this here, you know. <clears throat> so I'm trying I'm trying to get like if we're saying okay, let people express themselves the way they want music however they want. Are we talking of in church or we are now talking in general? Um, and again, after it's said and done, what should we do in church with our music? When I say our music, I'm specifically saying the music that is sang at church. What should we do? Anyone should sing however they want or should we have a, a, a pattern? to it or a harmony to it. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because um, I've, been, I've been in different cultures, Adventist, different cultures, and they will sing songs, same song differently, all of them. And in that particular culture, it makes sense to them. But now to take that, that song from that particular culture, Try, trying to impose it to another particular culture because you're allowed to express yourself. I, I, I'm kind of, I think that brings discord into, into the harmony. I believe we are supposed to, to have a harmony in, in terms of our worship. So when we are saying now anyone should express themselves the way they want according to their test, are we saying uh, in my home or are we saying uh, in the worship because uh, I'm trying to get what to do with my music because myself I'm one person who's so confusing when it comes to not confused confusing when it comes to music uh, a lot of people who come who come into my play playlist they get confused because I play different songs so and different genres and all that I enjoy that now should I bring that to church that's that's I, I uh, guess SK, you get my confusion. SK, yeah. SK to be to be on the point. We say a society's culture, <clears throat> I'm I'm looking for the slide, is determined by individuals provided conviction, uh, conviction is there. Yes, there we go. Uh there is no way you can bring this discord in in in, in a church society. I said music is for worship. The reason why we have standards is so that we have uniformity. The slide was there to bring people together. That one we have agreed. But to say when you are out of that 
this is, this is the way you should worship. That's why I gave example of Joseph, uh, of David. The brother had a problem with him and how he was doing his things because they were not used to, and yet God spoke to him through that. If you become a, 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 a the 5% will one day form a culture and the culture brings enlightenment. That's how change comes. Change does not happen uh, simultaneously to everyone, to every group, same time. It changes, evolves over time. But when it happens, sometimes there, are, if, even myself, there are certain things that I don't say. That's why I say, because I understand this platform. There are certain things that I don't say openly because of the weaker brethren, brethren in court. Because there are some people who might not, who might get lost completely. So we are saying, this is an educative forum where we say enlightenment should come. Many things has nothing to do with any uh, diabolic and satanic uh, connotations as we perceive them. Remember, our founding fathers of Adventism were whites, and we were introduced to Adventism in a white culture. And everything that was African was demonic. And in Zim, they will tell you, if Stunvet did not taught us this way, so whoever was not from Stunvet, it was a no-no. They would make sure that you, they can borrow a jacket for you, and that money should have been converted for other better use. So you hear where we were saying, gradually it will get there. But if God, if you can commune with God, period. We don't need to say because you are not connecting with God in this way. The purpose of the music is for worship. When we are at a wedding, let's do what the wedding does. There's a problem with you, SK and others uh, in this, let me say, uh, 2 three, 30 conversation. You go to a wedding and you sit down, people are enjoying and you act as if they are in hell is if you, you know the standard of enjoying a wedding in heaven. Because you have your own white culture of sitting down, no clap. Adventists, we are not, we don't allow people to ululate, even to clap your hands in church on a wedding. It's taboo, but is it sinful? Wait until you go to the hall as if holiness would have disappeared by then. At a wedding, it's a wedding. That's why people are now going to garden weddings because we are not understanding the concepts of what occasion. That is the presentation. Music, when you go to the children, don't sing those songs that are made for adults. Sing the songs that appeals to that occasion. As long as the ch little children, I gave you the song communication, they communicate, connect with their God at their level, at their own understanding, not at your understanding. That's my point. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm actually uh, re reminded of when Hannah was praying and mm -hmm. the priest thought she was drunk. You Very know, cool. sometimes some people are worshiping in truth and in spirit and they are raising their hands and you look at that person, you think they are drunk. Can't yeah, you right. don't know they are making generational prayers to, to break generational cases. They are making, you know, they are moved towards the, the, the throne. And I always say this, how do we maintain order for God? Because even our righteousness is chaos. Like they really, we can only go to a certain level when we try to contain this. Worship is uncontainable. When Job was in his distress, he even rolled on the ashes. You know, um, I'm just trying to say that human expression towards their God from their vulnerability and their authenticity cannot be governed from the lens of another human being. Because then who is now the intercessor between the two? You know, when the priest looked at Hannah, Hannah seemed lost. Because how do you pray like that in the sanctuary, right? So I'm just saying that for, for, for what you may perceive as discord for someone else, it's a tune of liberation for them. Um, if you go, I've, 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 I've had the privilege to visit a Pentecostal church. And the first time I was there, I was, I couldn't understand why is everyone moving? Like, why can't people just be seated and sober? But I, I got to understand it later to say, probably this is where they get to offload in their father's house. 
probably this is the, the the their liberation moment probably this is that for them and because i am not accustomed to that way i cannot then say these ones are drunk or these ones are not worshiping god in truth and in spirit because then uh, through which lens am i am i am i saying that so i think what the elder is trying to say is that as long as music is directing and leading people to god in worship in 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 praise and and if it it, it may have beats or a cappella or not as long as it's achieving its its purpose i th- i think to 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 then measure on what tempo or beat or how the pace you know then those become the nitty gritties but the ultimate becomes the fact that it leads people to the throne of god right so I appreciate this perspective and I really wish that it was a shared perspective in our churches. And I really pray that, you know, more and more of our leaders, uh, you know, have this type of, you know, thinking because then it liberates many people and it opens doors for those who deemed Adventism as a cult or Adventism as a, a group of people who are rigid and you know where you can't have any enjoyment or any smiles or any fun at all. So I, I just would like to say um I appreciate really genuinely so I appreciate the the, the presentation. I'm going to unmute um uh brother Arthur hello can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, thank you very much uh, for the lesson, though I got the, the last part of it. And I want to appreciate what the elder has been saying. Um, I, I, I think we need to have more and more of these conversations as, as, a, as a church uh, because they help us to, to, to grow and to mature as, as, as much as you are saying. Um, let me just try to rush through the few the, the points that I'm trying to make. Uh, I think um, I, I want to say to say firstly that I want to believe that worship, worship uh, should be a response um, that we we express in reaction to experiencing the presence of God or the the goodness of God. Um, what what I mean is, uh, even when angels are pictured in heaven, um, whether in Revelation and everything, where they are saying, where the worthy is the lamb. Of course, we are not told the notes and the whatever the structure of the music, but it is always a response to what they are experiencing. So, which makes that experience genuine um, and yeah and original. What what am I trying to say? Um, I think sometimes. We, we 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 try to make worship um not a response like we we already are trying to impose a certain response before we experience the present i don't know whether that makes sense because because we 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 may not necessarily need to detect how pers- a person can respond let me try to to break it down again there's a there's an episode probably Daniel and John or any other prophet where they came into the presence of God and the presence of God overwhelmed them. And Daniel says he became like a dead man. Uh, it, it, it was something that he was experiencing because he's reacting to the presence of God. But it didn't therefore then mean that we now have to prescribe that when we come to church, we should be on the floor as dead men if you get what I'm trying to say. So it's not like we prescribe the reaction, but we try to focus on trying to experience the presence of God. Then some of these things that we're trying to mandate, they usually take care of themselves. Um, when they, Like the song says, the Lord is in, is, is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. We don't keep silent first, but we first experience the 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 presence of God, then the appropriate response will will follow. Um, when we have experienced God, we don't need to say hush hush to whoever, but we have, but sometimes I feel like it's the opposite. We try to mandate the controlled environment when we are not even experiencing the presence of God. Then uh, I 
Well, whatever I will say, the, the, the second point is an issue of unity versus uniformity, because as much as we want to have uniformity, people sounding the same, doing the same things, having the same emotional responses, it doesn't necessarily mean they are united. Unity may mean we have different ways of expressing ourselves, even at an individual level. Yeah, I appreciate that we say, no, there's a, a certain culture uh, where we're saying as a collective culture, collective culture. If I'm talking about the Ndebele's in Zimbabwe, where I come from, maybe they, they have a common way of, of, of presenting themselves, uh, whether in public or in, in the, but it doesn't mean each of those Ndebele's doesn't have an individuality, you know? So sometimes we, 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 we try to, to erase the individuality of a person at the expense of the collective group, because we have concluded that the collective expression is, is, is what is acceptable. Yeah, because, because even as individuals, there are certain of, certain of us, when the preacher is preaching, we say a lot of amens, but some of us are just quiet throughout the sermon. We understand what the preacher is saying, but our personality doesn't accept, uh, doesn't make us be more expressive. So we need to balance all those things that, yes, there should be order in church, yes, they, but we cannot control how someone is responding to the presence of God. Uh, whatever I will say is still what, what the, uh, the presenter has said already, because there's this controversy that we have. Uh, there was this um, debate on, on Facebook the other time that I followed where people in South Africa, and I know most of us here are from South Africa, we complain about uh, maybe Zimbabweans who are in South Africa in SDA churches who are now almost like prescribing how the services should be conducted, you know, because where they come from in Zimbabwe, uh, generally there's a consensus on what Adventist music is or what Adventist standards are. So uh, what I see even on, on, on videos where, where, where South Africans they dance, you know, twist here and there uh, to this, the normal hymnals, the normal hymnals. I think the, uh, SK said something about that also. The normal hymnals and people are, are, are swaying here and there. Where I come from, it's not even acceptable. You get what I'm trying to so, say? So when I see it on, 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 on video, my immediate impression is to say, you know, these South Africans are less adv Adventist than me. Because according to me, this, this, this cultural expression that I, was, that I found in the church and accepted as, as the right way of, of worshiping makes me look down at the South Africans. So when I eventually go to South Africa and worship there, you may find me phoning people back home to say, no, 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 you know, this Adventism, it's a less standard. These people are, are not serious in that. that. That's the maturity, which I think the elder was saying, to, to understand that people are different. We are not all the same. But in spite of our differences, we could unite and be one people. Um, then the last thing that I want to mention is, is when I was privileged this other time uh, to worship in a, in a campus, um, university campus church that was so loose anyway. Um, they had invited some prisoners from Kami prison near, near Solusi to come and uh, sing uh, for us. Uh, during the, the service, supper school service. And these guys were coming uh, to sing uh, what, what we term Imbube uh, music, um, which is more a cultural kind of music. Uh, you know, I was so uncomfortable because uh, I've not been exposed to such music within my, within my, I don't know how they pulled it off at that, uh, at Solus University Church. I don't know how they pulled it off. But for some reason, they brought these guys, they were singing that music. And if you, if you know Imbove, they were doing all those, um, uh, the dances in, in, in church and those ashe, ashe, and all those things were done during Sabbath school. And now I had to sit down and, and ask myself, what was wrong with that? What, and, and by the way, all that music was, was gospel, as in it had a message. Uh, it is a message, but that's the more that kind of music is more culturally appropriate to to the Ndebeles or the Ngunis, if you will. And and 
and and I'm I'm thinking of another thing to say. As much as in Zimbabwe, a lot of our elders didn't like a cappella. They didn't like a cappella uh, when young people were singing a cappella and all those things. They didn't like it at all. Uh, but for some reason, when reality came, because reality appeals to them because they are goonies, they welcomed uh, reality type of music, which was like a dump, double standard. They do not want this kind of music from America, but they want this one which appeals to their cultural uh, you know, yearnings and all that. You know, so so I'm saying we can only appreciate the diversity and the richness of culture when we become more and more exposed to many, many other cultures, not our little little town from where we come from. And 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 in heaven, by the way, heaven will not be what you picture is a place similar to your own cultural experience. There will be Chinese people there, there will be German people there, there will be Portuguese people there. There'll be, you know, English people, the Debeles, Chonas, Tongas, whatever, all types will be there on that glorious morning. And you can imagine how diverse we will be on that day. But all of us expressing our praise and worship to God in whatever way we understand, but all of us will be united. You'll be, we'll be one in, in whatever. And anyway, the Bible then says we'll learn a new song. Probably that's when we'll learn the heavenly culture, eventually, whatever that means. But right now, we're all using our cultural understandings. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for that powerful comment. Um, and also just to add, to say, um, you know, we are not trying to shove um, anything down anyone's throat. It's okay to have a preference, right? Um, if you're your, you like a cappella and it, it, it draws you closer to God, then stick to that. Um, but those who do not like a cappella do not then look down upon them, right? As you would also not appreciate uh, anyone looking down on you as well. So I think these 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 conversations are there to just let us learn about what music and worship is in general. Then you can then you know according to your conviction and the spirit leading and your studies and you know your journey with god you pick what works for you um i always say to people that um for example they go to a church and then they say ah that church they do this then move move from there you know we shouldn't always feel the urge to change the way people do things when we find them doing their things the way they believe to do their things you move, you find a, 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 a church that appeals or suits your need within the Adventist circle. If, if, if you've noticed, the, the Adventist churches are different. Adventism in America and Adventism in South Africa, two different things. In Zimbabwe, Adventism and uh, here, two different things. So I think it's all about, you know, finding yourself in the Lord as well. Because if we try to, to, to have one spoon feed everyone else, then it also becomes a problem. Um, the standard should always be there, which is obviously uh, the, the, uh, is, is the doctrine and the content of the music sound. Then the beat and every other thing, then I guess then can be your preference and what you are convicted with. Because I don't want us to go out of this then feeling like, you know, we need to go out there and change everyone else who still likes King Herald's uh, because they think it's holy music. If that draws them closer to God, then it's fine. Um, if it doesn't do it for you also, it's fine, you know, but let's not try to, you know, be more theologically correct than other people and then in turn undermine them and, and have this superiority complex where we feel we, we, we are the chosen ones and we've got this golden treasure of understanding music and other, everyone else is going to hell. So just to also add on to just the objective of, of this lesson as a whole. I am going to unmute uh, Van Heden and Lloyd. Okay. Um, I think uh, uh, with the last uh, last comment by the elder, I think uh, we are now uh, you are now almost addressing my my question. Um, I'd say uh, sometime. Okay, first of all. Uh, what I was driving at is actually the slide that uh, deals with uh, circular and sacred. Uh, you, also, you also touched it when uh, you commented, and uh, that's why I'm saying that you, you're almost uh, touching uh, on my question. My question 
basically what I'm saying is that the line, the thin fine line that uh, separates the sacred and the circular is now blurred. It might have been uh, distinct 10, 15 years back, but now that line there has been blurred out to a point where if you were to say this is sacred or this is uh, circular, you might then be pol policing, as uh, you had earlier, as uh, some comment had earlier say, stated, that uh, well, we would be policing people if we said that uh, this kind of music is not acceptable and this uh, music is, uh, is acceptable. So even by drawing, that, uh, that chart that has the sacred and the circular, are we then not policing people? Because that was the thrust of my question. How do you separate the circular from the sacred? You know, some, some years back, uh, there was this uh, Adventist uh, friend of uh, mine that got married, and then the DJ didn't show up. So, I ran home and I took my CDs and I played the first song at that wedding. The pastor immediately came to me and he told me uh, to stop and uh, he was going to have a discussion with me when I when I come to church. Oh, was it the pastor? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was the pastor through the elder. And uh, so we had to get the pastor out of the place so that we could uh, play the music that we wanted. But I word got out that I played music that wasn't kind of acceptable to the, by the church. And I almost got into trouble for, for, for that. Well, all I'm saying is that there's music that I listen to that I will not play on, on Sabbath or in church. And that music, when I look back at it now, I'm thinking that uh, maybe, uh, those the, that music was even better. <clears throat> and maybe that music was better compared to to some of the music that is out there in in this day and age. And if we are going to, if we are going to say that uh, that secular music is sacred, if we are going to label that secular music as sacred or vice versa, which standard are we going to be using? Um, I, I was just reading uh, here the, the definition of sacred, right? Uh, it says connected with God or dedicated to a religious purpose, right? Um, I mean, the, I, I really sometimes I wish the Bible had everything, you know, I really wish God could just all sit us all down and tell us, don't listen to I'm a piano, listen to this one. I really wish that, you know, maybe this would clear a lot of confusion, right? But obviously it's not the case. Um, I'm assuming in my opinion, um, I, you know, you may disagree with that, but my assumption is that anything that brings glory to God ceases to be secular so if for example the the beat that's what I, I asked initially because in my understanding the content of the lyrics make the music and the beat supports those uh those lyrics right so this is why I asked initially that is there an evil or is there a secular beat that is, you know, defined as this is a beat for the world, you know? And the Bible says that if you bring in glory to me, right, uh, meditate on all the good things. And if you're doing everything, you must honor God in everything that you do, right? So if that music is bringing glory to God, and what does that mean? Um the lyrical content because that's the basis we can use because I personally haven't studied music deep enough to know the Illuminati beats and to know the the gospel beats I can only at this point you know define it based off the lyrical content 
So if the lyrical content and the intention behind the composition of that song is for people to direct their praise to God, I believe it ceases to be secular. Because, uh, for example, Facebook, right? <laughs> uh like the, the the elder said initially that before people were not even on this platform because it was demonized a lot of uh there's a lot of content on this platform that is not godly but there's also content that is godly on this platform same platform right so now the beat now is it like i'm still trying to get to that to say is the beat the one that we are judging here or because obviously we cannot be playing uh, anything that doesn't bring glory to God in a church. Uh, so, because then it defeats the purpose of that gathering and the, the the name church itself. I am assuming that you are then implying the, 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 the beat from outside. So we say the beats from outside using uh, godly or Christian lyrics. So I'm trying to say, uh, is, is that even still secular at that point? I don't know yes. if I'm thank, answer. Thanks, thanks, Melissa. Uh, I, let, let me just go straight on point. A religious music is that a type of music that is performed or composed for religious use or through religious influence. And scholars have agreed that it may overlap with ritual music. And I want to be straight to the point. Go to Nigeria, you can't go to any place of worship being a male without covering your head. It's taboo, period. Come to Southern Africa, a man cannot go to a place of worship wearing a head. That's why I said a society's culture is determined by individuals. Same people, you can't worship God with an uh, uncovered head. And this one says you can't do this. The same bit that you are asking, Go to Central Africa, Tanzania. I think some of you have seen that I'm promoting Sunny music. Those guys from Rwanda going up, they play instruments wire, wire in church. But look at how they look, they view it. Everything is for God and nothing else. The same music style. That's why I'm saying, uh, I said in the presentation, open remarks, I'll try to water down to our level because what these guys are asking is not what they want to ask. It's a subject of another day. I have stayed with the people. Not everything is diabolic and satanic as you think. The devil is not as black as we paint him. I, stray, I stayed during our research with people who were working, who were making this Nare uh, Museum, the, the so called Mbira Zewadzim. You cannot, that's why it's still referred to as a sacred instrument. But when it's in the hands of the wrong person, it does not perform anything. We tried to work with it, nothing happened, but when the real person who is possessed by this spirit is having the instrument, wonders were performed the whole night trying to sing. Because during the research, you know, when you are doing musicology, you need to go and stay with the people. You do your ethno-musicology, you do researches, you stay with the people. Nothing will happen to you. But as soon as the person is in control with, so the, the worry of these young people, there are many artists who are singing the same song, that same song, you can sing it and still give to the glory of who? Of God. But if you are possessed, that's why, we are saying the so-called prophets, you can go to their church, sit with them, play with them, uh, eat and share the blanket. If you don't have the spirit of Elijah, nothing will ever happen to you. So we demonize everything because we use a blanket statement. But the bottom line is, I didn't want to say this, if you don't have that connection with God, whatever you do, whatever you do, whether you are eating or you are talking or you are preaching or you are seeing, do it all to the glory of who? Of God. That is the bottom line, the main purpose of this media lesson. The presentation is to say so many things can be demonized by people, but it's God himself who know. That's why God does not judge us as a church. Though to some extent we say so, we are judged as individuals. What was your relationship with God? There are many people who are going to be saved from the background that we, we have even labeled them as those and 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 fit for heaven so the question is there are many styles that you may call with the same rhythm with the same 
a melody that has nothing to do with God, but people can be drawn to God with the same. If a group of people agree and they are in the same understanding, there's nothing wrong. In Zimbabwe, you can't play a, a full orchestra. I will be very bland. You can't play a double bass, even a bass uh, guitar plus a drum kit in Zimbabwe Adventist. That's taboo. But the same instrument is played all over, go to Southern Africa. You see so many groups, they play it honestly and earnestly in church. And they can say, that says the Lord. So who is using the instrument? Where is it being used? What is the occasion? To which group of people, to which culture is the one that determines whether you are worshiping wood? God, that's why I, I said, if you see the orchestration layout of that which will come from heaven, most of you guys will say, is this heaven? The good news is it's only those who will be saved who will meet it. Because there's a double tube, but there's a cello. The one that you see on the police band, the one that makes the, 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 the graves to open in the twinkling, the trumpet shall sound and the graves will be open. I wish you know which instrument will be, will be blown there. Go and reach and tabulate it step by step. You will see the type of instruments, the noise, the sound that will be produced. You remember how many kilometers, how many thousands of miles from earth to, the, to, to heaven. And as soon as they are blown, the sound will come to the earth. Imagine if that type of music can be played in church. That's why certain things are, the hidden things are for the Lord. We will understand it by and by. Things that we do not believe, we will now believe. But by beholding, we shall be changed. Certain things God will reveal in the fullness of time to us. It's 5% that has been revealed. The other 90% is still confused. 5% is still resistant. Time shall come. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. I've sat down with many people during the researches of music. We demonize many things music and it's only god in his mercies that he just looks at us and says uh they will repent later for now let me leave them now the same church standards the one who mentioned about standard adventism were centering and disfellowshipping and dismembershiping people who uh, my brother sk raised about zimbabwe who were venturing into politics now the, poly, the church is full of politicians now the same the same church that was centering is the same church this is which is now even praising and giving platforms. So time shall come. That's why I'm saying enlightenment will come. But when it comes, it will, it will have caused many casualties. There are some people which the church should stand up and apologize. I don't know how, because some people died in their dismembership, in their disfellowship, and the same things are now acceptable. Alas, it will happen like that. Like Moses, when his hands were weak, many people died. God in his wisdom, he will compensate those who lost their parents because Moses' hands were weak. When the church was weak, there were many casualties. God will understand. For now, I'm simply saying, I will not judge. I simply leave it to the Lord. I will not play God. God knows. The main thrust of the lesson is my relationship with God should be to communicate with God. The next person, God will deal with them. Yes, there is a standard that we should maintain. But when one person is one-on-one -on -one with God, I cannot judge. I'm finishing and I won't come on this uh, uh, the, uh, of talking. I'm rounding off. I'm saying in public, we have public. That's why we said culture should be distributed. You and God, whatever you do, whether you are in your car, play that which brings you connection with God, period. Though some people would not even understand. Some people can demonize you like what they were doing to Elisha. But God knew that Elisha was a servant of God. When they saw David, the brothers would not even understand, even I, I recognize him. They were saying, we know you, go to First Samuel chapter 16 and 17. They were even demonizing the brother because he was not doing things according to the, to the, to the culture. But he was in connection with God. And you don't hear brothers who were playing that same instrument. But he was in, in, in contact with God. Whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. I love you all and I love this platform because it opens um, the minds of men. 
certain things i remember by uh, my brother Mwemba was presented spiritual things are spiritually uh, uh, they are spiritually what descend right i'm um, thanks uh, my wife is whispering in my side she's always supporting us uh, we, we 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 will understand it by and by yes if um, we haven't, like, we pray for you there's a Thank hand uh, my elder before you 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 say your closing remarks um i think it's brother lloyd all right uh Happy Sabbath, Church. Hey, thank you very much for, for such a, a powerful presentation uh, on music. Um, I think on my side, I, what I wanted to say has been said, uh, but I will just uh, add uh, this short part to say, a presenter, uh, there might be a, someone listening to this message, uh, be it on Facebook, be it live now, uh who may seem confused i believe some would say that because uh now you have presented everything but there is someone who might want to ask especially youth to say where is the overlap to say when i start going this direction then i am out of the bounds without setting standards this is a uh, music and worship not in church maybe i am by myself outside of church and i want to do worship uh, and i might end up inviting demons thinking that i'm worshiping uh, it is i can say it is almost like what van Eden was actually saying where do we put the bounds that this is more secular for worship in church so now i am out of the church and someone wants to conduct worship and lo and behold satan has got his wiles of of agitating us animate us and you know resurrect some animosity in us and we end up being lost what would you be your tail end message to that kind of youth who wants guidance on that part thank you Putting me on the spot, Brother Lloyd, I will be very blunt. When in doubt, don't. I will tell you, we have brethren that we tried by all means. Uh, I thank God I did research whilst I was a family man already, maybe with some few years in the faith, not, not to say mature. We lost many brethren who wanted to venture into some territories where even the angels shun to go. The devil is not a child's play. Many times we venture into some territories that are so dangerous that even when you go there after a prayer, angels would not even trend on those grounds. Even the spirit of prophecy highlight that. If you know this is a ritual, that's why I said they are say secular rituals or secular sacred. They are an er some areas that are not supposed to. Uh, at one point, I'll just say this: we tried by all means uh, to venture. Let me let let me say it this way: there's someone who tried to go where there was a ceremony a ritual ceremony for appeasing the spirits and left and never came back. Uh, I made another contribution when Brother Mwemba was presenting. That day, the devil fought and they remember Lord Shady. There are graves that I know of people who wanted to, to trend on the devil's territory. That's why, you know, the stories of like the Bermuda cycle, there are those places. It's only God in his messes. He remember again, even God himself. There are areas that are so sacred that if you know that you have gone astray, don't tremble. Better you go to the outer court, not to the most holy. It's the same thing. I might sound as if I'm scaring people. It's the same thing. That's why you'd see during that time, 
you could not. There are some people who invite troubles for themselves. You go and trench and you touch the evil, say, saved as I am. You go and touch the holy things just through the pulpit. It's the same thing. If you are not fit, because there's, that's why I say the time, if we can have another, I will give you practical example where I even ended. I will tell you when they are doing this, thou shall not. There are some people who are inviting unnecessary problems. They are specific ritual, ritual, ritualistic music that you should not even tremble because you will never come back. Because when they are performing, and I'll tell you the, the, the occasion and the time when those drums, especially the three-legged, some of you, you use the three, you don't know what it means. You know, the traditional, what do you say, map few are on the way they put the pots and you see when they are putting the roof of that traditional tree, they have those lines which are triangles. It's not as triangles as you think. They are not done by any, anyone anyhow. They are music and you can see even the drums, they are decorated. It's not, a, it's not anyone who can decorate it. That's why I told you there is Mbira Zim. That instrument has specific ritual connotations and it's used for a specific ritual. That's why on this one, you can see it's there. Sacred, not performed or composed for as a ritual. If time would allow, we'll get into that one. Many people are going astray. They are inviting demoniacs. And that's why you see even when those songs are played and that instrument is played and you can see the spirit will come. That's why when the harp was played, the spirit sees they are specific instruments for specific functions and for a specific style of play. That's why I presented we have art and we have secular and we have folk music. We will come one day on that one. That territory, better safe than sorry. I will not do justice for this short time. But if we have time, I'll give you specific and you will see how they behave and how even the people dress and what they do. They, you can't play that type of music without having those things attached on you. And you can see that these are the people who are performing this. And un unfortunately, some of you, you just buy and use it. And even on the CD, on the sleeve, it's even displayed because it's meant for ritual purposes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I do not see any hands but there are comments okay there's no hands um i'm going to just read a comment here from facebook before i get to the zoom um says um ellen white in messages to young people encourages the use of god melodies from secular music in the enhancement of our music Okay, and then um, Brother Lloyd uh, says, the lure of popular music, I feel alarmed as I witness everywhere the frivolity of young men and young women who profess to believe the truth. God does not seem to be there, to be in their thoughts. Their minds are filled with nonsense. Their conversation is only empty, vain talk. They have a keen ear for music and Satan knows that what organs excite to animate and gross and charm the mind so that Christ is not desired. The spiritual longings of the soul for divine knowledge for a growth in grace are wanting. Um, I think that's a, a quotation from Adventist home, page 407. And then uh, he also says, solemn responsibilities rest upon the young, which they lightly regard. The introduction of music into their homes instead of inciting to holiness and spirituality has been the means of diverting their minds from the truth. Frivolous song and the popular sheet music of the day seem congenital, uh, congenial to their taste. Um, the instruments of music have taken time, which should have been devoted to prayer. Music, when not abused, is a great blessing, but when put to wrong use, is a terrible curse. It excites, but does not impart that strength and courage which the Christian can find only at the throne of grace, which, while humbly making known his wants, with strong cries and tears, pleading with the heavenly strength to be fortified against the powerful temptations of the evil one. Satan is leading the young captive 
Oh, what can I say to lead them to break his powerful infatuation? He is a skillful charmer luring them um, to perdition. Okay, um, I, I think I've, I've read all the key, key comments on, on the chat group. Um, I hope there's not anyone who I've left out in terms of uh, contributions, uh, comments, questions. Uh, Elder, you can just give us your closing remarks and maybe also close with the prayer immediately after that. Right, thank you, young people. Uh, may God help us and, and enlighten us every day as we start the word. Whatever we do, let's do it to the glory of God. Uh, when in doubt, let's seek the guidance of God. There are many times where we think we are doing the right thing. Before you venture into new territories of music, ask yourself, is your relationship with God right? Uh, some of the things that we are, the question that we have, God will reveal to us. If we seek his face, he will reveal to us. Let's go and research more. Anything called sacred, it is something to do with worshiping God. Anything that is secular, and the secular, secular to the extreme is meant for that. Let's try by all means. There's a verse that I want. If your hearts condemn you, isn't God greater than your hearts? You know, many times God speaks to us through our conscience. When you feel that your, your conscience is betraying you, it shows that God is still with you. And let's pray that God will enlighten us on this matter. And I thank you all for your contributions. I have learned a lot from you. Uh, we will continue and pray for one another that the Lord will bless us. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed as we pray. Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, we thank you for such a powerful lesson that you have prepared for us. Maybe per adventure, we missed the mark in our discussions. We failed to represent you properly. Forgive us, dear Lord. All the questions that are unanswered, may you answer to us through revelations and through dreams. When all is said and done, it is our wish and our desire that Lord, glory and honor coming back to you, we may have mercy and found our names written in the book of life and we will live the life that will draw many to you. May we not be considered in this conversation, but glory and honor goes back to you, for you are the sustainer of our lives and the one who imparted wisdom and knowledge to all of us. Be with us and reveal us more of what you want us to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Elder, once again, for taking time to, uh, you know, compose this presentation and answer our questions and, you know, engage with us on this topic. We really appreciate the effort that you have put and for allowing God to use you in such a mighty way. And for those that joined today, I'd like to say thank you so much for always supporting the programs, for being there to uh, to you know share your contributions ask your questions you know disagree agree you know we are all about that we are all about conversations we're all about creating a space where we can all learn from each other where we can all become better christians and make it to the kingdom of god so i'd just like to you know say thank you so much for everyone that continues to click this link every time 2 30 every sabbath to just engage on these conversations which are very important which are very uh you know uplifting and will aid us in on our journey to 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 heaven just a reminder on the upcoming programs uh for the month of october we are dealing with physical and mental addictions the first of october will be worshiping in pain the 8th of October is Drugs, Alcohol, the Story of Addiction. Mm -hmm. And then the 15th of October will be Pride, Arrogance, Silent, 
silent killer and then uh, there's a, a typo there it's supposed to be the 21st of october is how to get away with murder hatred amongst us the 29th of october obsessions and dark desires please note that if you want to uh, stay up to date with our programs and our speakers make sure you are on our platforms make sure you are following us on facebook instagram on our tiktok pages on everywhere where we are guys just rally behind us so that we can make this gospel easily accessible to many of our friends and our community and do invite people to join us on this platform every sabbath and do also help us with our data fund uh, airtime contributions once again the number is on the screen um Thank you so much to our Facebook community as well. Not forgetting uh, for joining us today. We will see each other again next time, same time, and with another interesting topic and another powerful speaker. Stay blessed and until we meet again. Thank you. Goodbye.